Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this fireplace in which when the player is near it, it will regenerate health. And this includes sound effects and then obviously the visual fire as well. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So obviously we have our fire there. We can hear it crackling in the background. And if we go up close to it, we're going to be regenerating our health. If we're too far, we won't regenerate. Obviously when we're near it, we will. And this looks and sounds great. And also if we get far enough away from the fire, the audio will fade out. And this looks and sounds absolutely great. And as you see, once we reach full health, we can't regenerate any more health as we have full. So I'll be showing you how to do this now. So our first step is going to be to create our blueprint actor for our fireplace. Well, your first step, sorry, is to actually also be importing all of this. But I've already got that. So I've got a fire pit static mesh and some audio for the fire crackling and also the health regenerating, which I'll leave links to in the description down below if you'd like to use these as well. So I'm going to be using those. So once you've got those imported, what we're going to do is right click, get a blueprint class, and I'm going to get an actor. I'm just going to name this fire pit BP, or you can name this whatever you like. This is just what our fire pit is going to be. So once you've done that, open it up straight away. And now in here, in the viewport, what we're going to do is add all of our components that we need to create this. So what we want to do is add components up on the top left, and we want to get a static mesh. So static mesh like that, I'm just going to name this fire pit. And the static mesh we want is going to be the fire pit that we have. So mine is fire pit model like so. And now the model I'm using is very big. So I'm just going to scale this down to 0.2175 on the X, Y, and Z. And to change them all at the same time, just hit that little padlock there to the right of it and they will all change together like so. So now we have that at a better size for us. So obviously edit that to be the correct size that you want for your model. After that, I'm gonna keep the static mesh selected so that I can then use this as a parent. I'm gonna add another component. I'm gonna add an audio like so, add audio. And that is gonna be something we're gonna create in a minute. Select the fire pit again. And now I'm gonna get a particle system. So I get particle system like so. And I'm actually just gonna name this fire particles. And I'll name the audio fire crackling as well. Obviously, you don't need to name them if you know what they are. It just helps keep it organized. So like so, in the fire particles, what I'm going to do is select the particles template there and actually get fire as that is something that you get in the starter content. So that looks great like so. So we have the starter content fire there. I'm going to change this to 2 on the X, Y, and Z just to scale it up a bit and then maybe move it up a bit like that as well. So now we have our fire there, which also has its own smoke as well. So we can see this is looking great already. Now the audio we may as well do now as well. So if we minimize this, we have our fire crackling audio here. So if you can just hit play on that, you can hear what it's gonna sound like. So what I'm gonna do is right click that and I'm gonna create a queue. So we have fire crackling queue and I'm gonna open that up. What I'm gonna do as well actually is open up the actual sound effect as well. So open that up and I'm gonna tick looping like so, so that it will then loop and be crackling forever for as long as the fire has started. So then go back to the sound queue and what I'm gonna do is scroll down until we get override attenuation and just tick that like so and then what I'm going to do is just minimize this a little bit. And then this means we can change how big the inner radius and outer radius is here, which is how far we're going to be able to hear it from. So if I go back to the fire pit BP and put this audio into the sound there. So select the audio and put sound in there. Now we have that there. I'm just going to move that to be in the middle of the fire. Then go back to the sound queue and just minimize this a little bit like that. So we can still see everything, but we also need to be able to see the viewport here. And what we're going to change is the inner radius there and the fall off distance, which like I said, is where you can hear it from. So what I'm going to do is just actually place in the fire pit in here. And so this is so I can see where the audio is. Or if you can't see it like that, what we're going to do is just actually drag in the queue as well. So we're dragging the sound queue. Now we can see it like that. So sometimes it doesn't load on the blueprint straight away. So just do this instead. But then we're going to do the exact same thing. So get it up like that. And then we can just change the sphere like this. So this sphere here is where you're going to be able to hear it full volume. This sphere here is where it will be a bit quieter and fading out. So I'm going to change the fall off distance down to be a bit lower like that. So I reckon that, that is good distance like so. Might just increase it a bit. So in here, you're able to hear the fire at full volume, and here it will be fading out a bit. So I think that looks good, like so. So then I can just get rid of that sound cue there as we have it in the fireplace, and now that's good. So I'm going to save and close that. And then one final thing we need to do in this viewport here is add another component, and we're going to add a box collision. And this is going to be where the player has to be standing in order to be able to regenerate health. So they have to be close enough to the fireplace. So what I'm going to do is just scale this up a little bit to make it nice and big for me. So I think that's going to be good for me. 4.75 on the X and Y, and I just increase it on the Z a bit as well. I think that's going to be good. Again, you can see how big this is in game when you place it in. So I think maybe a little bit bigger and that will be good for me. So yeah, I think that's good. So I'm going to save that like so, and then go straight over to the event graph here. What I'm going to do is just delete these three events here. I'm going to right click on the box collision, add event, 
add-on component begin overlap and then do that again right click on the box collision add event add-on component end overlap the other actor out of these is going to be going to your character so for me that's third person character but it's going to be third first or whatever you've named it and this is because this is what we want the character to be so we want the third person character to be triggering this so that's great like that and after this, what we want to do is create a variable in the bottom left down here. So in the bottom left, we have variables. Hit plus variable. What I want this to be called is in range or in range question mark, anything like that. And this is just basically if we're close enough to the fireplace to be able to regenerate it. And this is so we can also then create a loop to regenerate health. So what we want to do is after the event begin overlap, we want to set is in range to true. And out of event end overlap, we want to set it to false as this is how we're close enough and we're not close enough. Also, if you don't have your health variable, what you can do is open up your third person character with just your character blueprint, add a plus variable down here and then call it health or whatever you like and make sure that this is an integer up in the top right up here. Then after this, what we want to do is as third person character from our cast, we're going to get the health. So get health like so, then out of the health, what we're going to do is get a less than or equal to integer. So the integer of health is less than or equal to I'm going to set this to 100 but this is essentially just going to be your maximum health so if you have an integer for max health as well put that in there but this is just your value for the maximum amount of health the player can have then what we're going to do is hold down b left click and get a branch the condition is that less than or equal to we just made there and then what we're going to do is actually hold down b left click and get another branch plug that into the in range and this condition is going to be the is in range. So you can just plug that in there like so. And basically if in range is true, we're gonna go after that branch there. And the reason we're doing this again is because we're gonna be creating a loop. So we can do that like so and just move this over a little bit like that. Out of false of both of these, we're not gonna do anything. So what we're gonna do again is come out of the health variable there. And we're going to get a integer plus an integer like so. And then as third person character again, we're going to set health like so. So come out of true, set health like that with the health as this addition here. And what we're gonna do is for this addition, this is how much we want to increase the health by. So I'm gonna set this to five, but you can set this to whatever you want. This is just how much the health the player is increasing by. Then after this set, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of this and we're going to get a play sound at location. So play sound at location like that. The location I'm gonna go as third person character, get actor location. I'm just going to plug that in there like so for the location. So this sound is going to be at the player. The sound asset is going to be my increasing health sound that I have. So health regen, obviously use whatever you like in here. Out of this, I'm going to hold down D, left click and get delay. And I'm going to set this to one second. You can set this to whatever you like. This is just going to be the interval between the player increasing health. So if you want the player to increase health every five seconds, put five. If you want it to be every 0.4 seconds, put 0.4 but this is where you'd set it. And then what we're gonna do is come out of the completed of that delay and go back into our first branch here. This is why I used this in range. So this is gonna create a very basic loop here. And if we're not in range, then it's gonna stop the loop obviously as it will come out false. So what I'm also gonna do is just find this line that we just made, move that down and double click it just to add a reroute node, just to keep it a bit more nice and organized like so. So that's gonna work perfectly like that. And now that is the code all set up. So again, you can customize this to be how much you want the health to increase by and how often you want the player to increase the health. But other than that, that's all set up. What I've also done for this is just create a very basic HUD just so I can visualize the health and put it into a progress bar on the screen like so, just so I can see it visually and know that it's working. So now this should be working perfectly. So we can test this out. So we can save, compile, minimize that and make sure that we have it in the world like so and if we press play we can hear the fire sound crackling if we walk away it's going to get quieter it's going to fade out and you'll notice we can actually still hear it it hasn't faded out and that's because of one issue which is also why we couldn't see the circles on here that's because we put in the fire cue sound effect but we didn't update it to be the cue so you might not have made that mistake just make sure that in here you have your fire crackling cue not your normal sound effect so now if we compile that, we can see this should now work a lot better. So we try that again, and you can see we can hear the sound. If we walk away from it, it's gonna fade out slowly like that. Obviously the bigger the circle, the longer it takes to fade out. And if we get back close enough to it, it's gonna come back in again. So the sound works perfectly. As you saw, when I got close enough, the health is gonna increase and we have that sound effect like that as well. So that all works perfectly. We have the audio working and the functionality of the health increasing. And what should happen is when we get to the, our max health, we shouldn't increase anymore like that. And that works perfectly. And again, as you can see, we have our fire here looking great. So we have the audio and the sound as well. Now with this model, that's just clipping through the floor a little bit, but I can just move it up slightly to get the materials working a lot better like that. 
So this just works and sounds great. Now if you want the volume to be quieter, you can obviously mess about with that to get it perfect for you. But this is working great, so we have the functionality of the health increasing and the fire and sounds and everything like that. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've created our fire pit so that we have an actual fire there. So we've got fire, smoke, the fire crackling sound effect. And when we go away from it, that will fade out. And if we don't have maximum health, then when we go near it, our health will regenerate until we do get to maximum. And that will also play a sound effect as well. And if we leave, the health will stop increasing. So that works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.